Hello, and welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Tori, and today I'll be demonstrating how to align an off-axis parabolic mirror. Before we get started, I first want to discuss which parts we'll be using for today's demonstration. First, we'll have our light source. This is a fiber-coupled LED. We have a ruler, two viewing screens. This viewing screen I've added a bullseye to. We have a threaded kinematic mount, onto which I've already screwed in a retaining ring. Then we have an adapter that we'll use to add our off-axis parabolic mirror to our mount. I'll show you how to use that and add that to your mirror later. And then finally, we have our off-axis parabolic mirror. This is a one inch aluminum off-axis parabolic mirror with a reflected focal length of four inches. Before we get started, I first wanna talk about how the geometry of your off-axis parabolic mirror can affect your alignment process. Parabolic mirrors are good for a broad range of wavelengths, and they get their names from the fact that the face of a parabolic mirror runs along the curve of a parabola. When we think about a parabolic mirror, we think about a mirror that is taking a, either a divergent beam and turning it into a collimated beam, or a collimated beam and turning it into a focused point. That focus point will always lie along the midline of your parabola. The distance from the center of your parabolic mirror to the focus point is called your reflected focal length. The other focal length that we need to be concerned about is the parent focal length, which goes from the bottom of your parabola along the midline to your focus point. You may find that when you're aligning your parabolic mirror that you may be at the correct reflected focal length but not be at the correct parent focal length. So you may have to move your light source in two directions, so both forwards and backwards and side to side. Now that we've discussed how the geometry can affect your alignment process of your off-axis parabolic mirror, I wanna get started with our demonstration. All right, now the first thing that we need to do is add our adapter to our off-axis parabolic mirror. To do this, we need to align the knob on our adapter with the notch on our off-axis parabolic mirror. This should click into place, and then you just need to add your three screws. These screws are quite small and can get caught into the holes of your optical table, so please be careful. Now that we've added our adapter to our off-axis parabolic mirror, we need to talk about how our off-axis parabolic mirror will sit within our optical setup. So we want our collimated beam of our off-axis parabolic mirror to run parallel to this line of our table. To do that, we need to have our mirror mounted in this direction. This is because the long edge of our off-axis parabolic mirror will run parallel to our collimated beam. Next, we need to talk about how our, we need to align our mirror into our mount. To do this properly, we need to first imagine an invisible line from the top of our mirror to the bottom of our mirror, from the tallest point to the lowest point. That line will intersect the optical axis. This imaginary line, we want it to sit perfectly horizontal and perfectly centered within our mount. When that has occurred, the optical axis will be aligned. Next, we need to add our mirror into our mount and get that alignment process started. Depending on the thickness of your adapter and your mount, you may or may not be able to screw in your mirror all the way. As long as you have it in a few turns, it should be fine. I'm going to get my spanner wrench ready to tighten my retaining ring. And then we're going to, again, imagine our invisible line from the tallest point of our mirror to the lowest point of our mirror. Then we want to have that intersect with the center of our mounting hole. Some people find it helpful to draw lines on their mount where the optical axis should align. Once you have that aligned, you should tighten your retaining ring and this will lock your mirror into place. The next thing that we need to do is to ensure that all of our optics center are at the same height. So 
The center of our off-axis parabolic mirror is at 125 millimeters. I've already preset this, so this should be true. The center of our LED should also be at 125 millimeters. You may notice that I've used post colors. This is to ensure that the height of our mirror is at the same height all the time. If we need to move our mirror back and forth for some reason during our alignment process, this ensures that our height is not lost and we don't have to reset it throughout the process. I would highly recommend using post colors in this application. The next thing that we need to do is to secure our mount with our mirror in it to our table. We're doing this because you have a lot of different variables to consider with, when you're aligning an off-axis parabolic mirror. Both the distance between your LED and your mirror, both forwards and backwards and side to side, and then also the rotation of your mirror. Because you have so many variables to consider, it's important to fix one of your items to your table so that way it's not moving. So either choose your mirror or your light source. In this case, we've chosen our mirror to fix to our table. Next, I'm going to make sure that the mount is roughly parallel to the base. This is just to make sure that our mirror's collimated beam coming off of it should follow the holes on our optical table. Next, we need to create a rough alignment with our LED in our mirror. To do this, first we need to estimate how far away our LED needs to be. As our reflected focal length is four inches, the LED needs to be roughly four inches away. Using the holes on our optical table, we should be able to do this quite easily as our holes are one inch apart on this table. So one, two, three, four holes, roughly four inches, and that's where our LED should go. Next, we need to estimate where our LED should go side to side. We want it to be roughly centered within our mirror. All right, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna turn on my LED now. All right, the first thing that we need to do is to move our LED side to side. This will affect the shape. If we go really far in one direction, we will create an oblong shape in the vertical direction. If we go really far in the other direction, we'll become oblong in the horizontal direction. What we're looking for is a medium between these two shapes. Ideally, it's a circle, but it may not be in this case. That looks to be about even medium between these two different shapes, these two different extremes. Next, I'm going to check my beam height and profile up close. So I'm going to center my bullseye on my beam. I have a one inch bullseye and this is a one inch off axis parabolic mirror. So it should create a one inch collimated beam. That's what we're seeing up close, or that it's a one inch beam. And when we go farther away, we can see that the height has changed and the shape of our beam has changed. Because the height has changed, we know that our optical axis is not quite aligned. So if you only need to make small adjustments, then you can use the adjusters on your kinematic mount. But as this is a little bit of a larger adjustment, I'm actually going to loosen the retaining ring on our mount and rotate the mirror until I find that it's keeping the same height. All right, so if we rotate our mirror really far up or really far down, we get these weird oblong teardrop almost shapes. What we're looking for when we're rotating our mirror is that half our beam is above our center line and half our beam is below our center line. So really we're looking to keep our beam at the same height. So once our beam is halfway above and halfway below, we're gonna tighten our retaining ring to lock our mirror into place. Now we need to repeat the same steps for alignment that we had already started. So we need to move our LED side to side. And we're looking for a medium shape between the two extremes. That looks to be about right. Now we're going to move our LED forwards and backwards. So if we go 
a lot closer, we get a really large beam. And if we go a lot farther away, we get a really small beam. So we're looking to be about this one inch diameter. All right, and now that we've moved our LED forwards, we now need to move our LED side to side again to check that the, we're at the correct parent focal length as well, so that the shape is the same. Ideally, we're a circle, and if you're properly aligned, it should be a circle. And at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with the alignment of our beam. And we can see that our beam profile looks nice and even, which is exactly what we'd like to see. But this may be a problem for some people because we are overfilling our off-axis parabolic mirror. Now, our mirror is quite new and doesn't have any nicks on the edges, but if your mirror isn't in very good condition, you could see that you have beam quality issues or that you're seeing nicks on your beam from the nicks on your mirror. If this is occurring, we would suggest moving to a larger off-axis parabolic mirror or using optical components to shrink your beam until it underfills your mirror. In summary, it's important to remember that although we did this process going from a divergent beam into a collimated beam, the same process can be repeated for a collimated beam into a focus point or with larger mirrors. Also, it's important to remember to only move either your light source or your mirror. If you're moving both at the same time, you can get into cycles of misalignment that are very difficult to get out of. And finally, it's important to remember you may need to repeat this process many times before you're actually able to align your mirror. This is a skill and it takes time to learn, so please be patient with yourself. I hope this helps you in the lab someday. If you have any further questions, please contact Tech Support.